During my time on an aircraft carrier, we went through a hurricane not once, but twice. We were in the Atlantic, returning to our home port, but first we had to dock at Norfolk so we could offload the Admiral and his staff. We hit the hurricane about 300 miles from the east coast. At first it was just a lot of pitching up and down with green water coming over the bow. We had two alert birds set up on the cats, but it was determined that the aircraft would be okay since the storm was only a Cat 1 at that time and the engine inlets and exhausts were covered. We were inside about two hours when we got an emergency request for help from a merchant ship that had a medical case that needed immediate help. We turned around and headed towards the direction of the ship. We were not quite out of the storm, but we were able to launch our helicopter since we were in range. On the way there, the ship reported that another Navy ship had gotten to them sooner and no longer needed assistance. Our helo was called back and we again turned towards home, but by this time, the storm had grown into a Cat 2 edging towards Cat 3. It was too late for us to try and divert around it, so we had to continue into it. The ship was bow up, bow down, but now we were taking some heavy rolls. Nothing like our sister's smaller ships, but for a carrier, they were pretty good rolls. When transiting across the ocean, unless you're part of the navigation and engineering departments, there isn't anything you can do unless asked. I went up to Pryfly, the ship's tower, so I could see the whole length of the ship and watch the storm. I saw water coming over the bow at about 20 feet above the flight deck and I could see the expansion joints twisting. Not a good thing. I also saw the engine covers being blown off the intakes of the planes on deck. It was strange to see seawater pouring out of the exhaust on them like a faucet. Mark II for the boneyard. Seawater is very corrosive to metal. Seawater that is laden with salt going through an engine causes major issues and since you can never be sure that all of the water was rinsed out of the bearings, fittings and cables, it's better just to junk it because the whole aircraft was being submerged in seawater. We could never get to all the spaces that the water did unless you tear the aircraft down completely. Towards the aft of the ship I again saw the expansion joints in that direction twisting heavily. Our cherry picker or mobile crane was lost overboard by snapping its tie downs and falling over the side. I then heard the emergency secure signal being given because our forward starboard hangar door had been knocked in by a side wave. The door collapsed on top of two A7s on the hangar deck and crushed two sailors who got caught by the collapse. Water was now pouring into the hangar deck and made walking in it impossible. Some compartments forward were flooded and the ship went into emergency stations with condition X-ray, which means securing all hatches and reporting to your assigned workspace. The damage control department was sent to shore up the hangar door and pump out the flooded areas. We sailed out of the storm about two or three hours later, but pulling into Norfolk was out of the question since they had secured ahead of the storm and all ships that could sail were out to sea. No docking piers were ready to receive us. We then turned south and went to our home port of Mayport, Florida. By the time we arrived, the toll was six aircraft totaled two on deck and four in the hangar deck, three sailors dead, two in the hangar and one who slipped and fell hitting his head, and the hangar deck door damaged beyond repair, all safety netting and edge antennas were torn off and the forward catwalks were peeled back on themselves. The expansion joints were severely damaged, we lost the cherry picker in a forklift, no one saw this happen but it wasn't there when we were able to assess the damage over the side. The forward compartments were extremely flooded and now needed refurbishing and repair. We stayed at our home port and repairs were carried out at the dock. The ship made one more cruise after this and was decommissioned when it returned. So what's it like on board during a heavy storm? Terrifying, but you have a job to do and you do it. It's part of life at sea. Do note though that sailing into a hurricane is not something that a ship would do unless there was no other choice. We knew that the storm was there and at the time it was determined not to be that severe. A Cat 1 storm doesn't affect a carrier that much because of its mass and weight. When we went into the storm at first, it was no big deal. If we had not turned around and sailed back the direction we came, perhaps we would have made it closer to Norfolk and not been in the storm when it grew in size and power, but when a maritime emergency signal is given, every close and available ship must render aid. The signal is only given if lives are in peril. I will say that to a man, at that time only men were on board ships, everyone did their best and their job. No one freaked out or started panicking. That is what it's like inside a carrier in a heavy storm. 
Thanks for listening to my story. I look forward to hearing your story. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for staying tuned. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can always get to watch more amazing videos like this. See you in the next video. Bye for now.